Hi guys and welcome back to Skill Studio. Today we're going to be finishing this Tiger's interior by painting its engine, guns, and periscopes. I'm also going to be going over chalk pigments, graphite polishing, and glassy effects. And yes, after this episode we will start work on the exterior of this big cat. So, grab a snack, sit back, and let's get started. To start off, I'm going to base coat the engine Vallejo Dark Sea Gray. After that, I'm going to paint details with Vallejo Light Rust, Vallejo Ivory, and Vallejo Air Silver, which really is a great metallic paint, and I highly recommend it as it has great coverage and shine. After that, I'm going to mix a basic oil pin wash using Burnt Umber Oil Paint and Tester's Enamel Thinner. When working with a pin wash, just make sure that you run it into all cracks and around every detail. It helps establish a good base for the upcoming effects. After you let it dry, all you have to do is clean up the unwanted excess and stains with enamel thinner. After we finish cleaning up the pin wash, we're going to do some oil color modulation by applying small amounts of black and blending it upwards with a 1 in 8 inch angular shader. After that, I'm going to apply dry pigments made by grinding clay pastels. I saw this in a picture of a Tiger 2 or Tiger 1 interior. Uh, I'm not sure if it was true for an active tank, but I really wanted to make it pretty grimy in the engine compartment, so I went for it. After I applied the pigment pretty thick, I went over it and cleaned up the excess with some enamel thinner and a paintbrush. Once the enamel thinner dries, it also serves to bind the remaining pigment to the surface a little better. Thank you. 
For the exhausts, I painted them Vallejo Dark Rust and then blended some burnt senna oil paints into it. After that, I sponge chipped it with ivory to give it some more texture and after some more oil paints, we'll simulate scorched metal. I followed that up with some raw senna oil speckling, which I then blended out to tone them down. To create a more interesting surface, I sponge applied burnt sienna and then blended it. After that, I speckled on more oil paints and then blended a little bit more raw sienna into it. I then finished the effect off with some rusty chalk pigments. I started by heavily applying a lighter color. Then, when I was happy with that result, I put some browner, darker colors in small spots to add some texture and contrast to the exhaust pipes. After that, we can get started on the radiators. I base painted them a dark gray and then dry brushed each one to really make those details pop. Yeah, even though you really won't be able to see it, I think it adds detail and it's actually pretty fun to dry brush things because you can just see the details just come out of it. So as you can see, they look pretty good. I'm going to use Panzerace's Light Rust for the fuel tanks. Now red is notoriously hard to airbrush, and so you have to build it up in light coats uh, over and over again. Just kind of reworking it and reworking it, going over it, going over it, uh, until you get the tone you like. I'm sorry that basically all you're seeing is the end of my airbrush, but to get them painted correctly, I had to put my airbrush there. Also, if you're wondering, I use a Pash VL with a 1.05 millimeter tip. I'm not really sure what color these straps should be or even if they are straps or just kind of bends in the metal. If anybody does know, please let me know. I'd uh, love to hear what they actually are. Um, I painted these ones silver and then this one I painted in a kind of leathery color. I think it's German camo black brown. After that I applied a pin wash. For some reason it decided to soak into the paint. If somebody knows how to counteract that, please let me know. I'm planning on maybe getting a set of Tamiya clear coat so I can just protect it. After that, I'm going to start color modulation with a little bit of red oil paints. As you can see, I'm just kind of applying it in a line down there. And then I'm going to take my 1 8 inch angular shader. I'm not going to use any thinners or anything. I'm just going to blend it upwards. Now I'm going to start putting some stains around the top there. Uh, as you can see, I can just draw an outline and then fill it in with that same wash actually. It makes really good stain fluid. I know some people buy it, but I find that the pin wash works just as well. And then I'm just going to make some little spatters with my paintbrush. The trick to this effect is building it up slowly with spattering and just painting it on. After that, I'm going to start drawing preliminary streaks so I can refine them into uh, streak and grime. 
later. For this process I'm using uh, just black oil paint. And then I'm just going to refine the streaks with my brush and some enamel thinner. Remember for convincing streaks you need to work in both directions, so upward strokes and downward strokes will make the most realistic effect. After I got those first streaks done, I decided to blend them downward and actually I found out it really makes it a convincing streak because it elongates and points the tip and makes a little stain underneath. Then you just clean up around it and it makes a couple nice little streaks where you had one before. After that I'm going to use the same chalk pastel powder to create a dry gritty effect on the top of these. I'm going to redo the oil stains around the top there and then some spattering effects to finish the effect out. As you can see it's very realistic. With that the engine is finished, let's move on to the gun. I started by painting the canvas bag that catches the empty shells as they're ejected from the 88. I used a bit of a thinner paint and so had to make sure to do a couple thin layers so that I could get a brush stroke free coat that was realistic. Then I painted the periscope with gloss black. I found this ended up looking pretty accurate. After that, I painted the breech with silver. Not much to say there, I just used Vallejo Air and it has really good coverage properties so it's really easy to brush on. While that was drying, I painted the leather cover for the gunner's eyes. Uh, German Camo Black Brown. For the next step, you need a graphite pencil or powder and a silicone brush. You just get some graphite on your brush and rub it into the metallic area. This polishes the metallic paint and makes it look more continuous and like a real piece of metal. It's actually a really cool effect uh, and I wish it was used more on YouTube. You can buy metallic pigments, but graphite works just as well and costs five times less. Next I'm going to drill out the MG42 with my X-Acto knife. I'm going to use Vallejo Air Gunmetal for this. After I was done painting the details with gloss black, I polished it in the same way, and as you can see, it looks really good.
For the periscopes, I'm gonna paint each one with a Vallejo dark sea green as it's just a little bit off gray and I think it adds some good contrast. For the next step, I'm gonna use Elmer's Washable Clear Glue. Now make sure it's clear and thin it down with water. Then cover each periscope with it, just the glass part, and you'll see that after it's dry, it leaves a super glossy finish and looks like a wet effect or glossy effect, just as way cheaper and reactivatable if you don't like the result. As you can see, it really does look good. And with that, we're done. If you liked this video, please let me know by giving it a like and leaving a comment. If you want to be updated whenever I post new content, tips, or channel news, you can do that by subscribing and make sure that you click the bell icon. Next week, we'll detail the exterior of this tiger, and so be sure to stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching this far. And we'll see you next time.